Hey, what's up everyone? In this tutorial, what we're going to talk about is bullet forces inside of Lightwave 11.5, and we're going to use forces to recreate this effect. Okay, very cool. So what's happening here is this null has a force field applied to it, and this null has a vortex force applied to it, and it's actually very easy to set this scene up. So let's just go ahead and get started. In layout, I have two objects, um, an array of boxes, all on one layer, and then just a solid box. So what I want to do is select the um, layer with a lot of boxes on it, go to the Effects Tools tab, and let's make this a parts body and then select the uh, solid box and make that a static body. Now what I want to do is go to items and let's add a null. And first let's call this force field. And let's go to the edit menu. Instead of standard, let's choose ball. And for the scale, let's make this three meters and then hit okay. That will just give us a better representation as to where the force is going to start. So then let's just move this out of the way, somewhere right about there. And we have auto key on. So now let's just clone this by hitting control C, hit okay. Then let's go to rename and let's call this vortex and hit okay. Under the effects tools tab, we can now uncheck enable dynamics so that we're not simulating every time we make a change. And let's change the timeline to about 300 frames. Let's select the force field null. And under forces, select force field. And we'll do that first instead of vortex. Now let's open up world properties. So I wanna to go to frame 120. And where it says negative 25 meters, let's just get rid of the negative and make it a positive. So now I can see we have our animation there. Let's go back into the world properties. And let's go to the parts, which was the layer with all the boxes on it. Go to item. And let's make the shape box. If you leave it on mesh or play with any of these other settings, you're going to get varied results. For this example, we're going to use box. Then let's go to force field. And we're going to control the strength of this using a gradient. So click on the T to open up the texture editor. And instead of layer type image map, let's change it to a gradient. And we're going to make the input parameter object distance, and then we're going to choose that force field. Let's set the end to two meters and add a key just by clicking in that area. We're going to set the value of the last key to zero and the value of the first key to 0 0.1. Now I know these settings uh, from doing uh, this tutorial previously, but you can go ahead and mess with this and up that to get uh, the results that you're looking for. But for this example, 0.1 is fine. And now I want to change the vector on the Y to be less drastic than one meter. Let's just make it uh, 400 millimeters. So now if I enable dynamics at frame zero, let's X out of that. I'm just going to go ahead and skip to frame 120 and it'll start simulating. I'm going to pause here and come back when it's finished and we'll check out what we have so far. All right, so Bullet just got done simulating. And if we scrub through the timeline, you can see that the force field is interacting with our boxes exactly how we want it to, up to frame 120. If we scrub through the first couple keyframes, you can see that our boxes are moving before the force gets to it. But don't worry, we'll take care of that in a second. Now let's go to our vortex null just by selecting it. And let's turn off dynamics again. And let's go ahead and animate this null. So the force field null travels 120 frames. We're also going to make the vortex null travel 120 frames. And let's start it around frame, let's say 60 for now. Let's hit enter twice to create a keyframe at 60. And then let's skip ahead to 180 frames. 
And again, let's just get rid of the negative 25 and make it positive. Hit enter again. Let's go into the graph editor. And you can see that we're getting some movement in between the keyframe at zero and keyframe at 60. Let's just go ahead and select both those and change them to linear and X out of that. So now you can see 60 frames later, the vortex null starts moving. Let's go into the world properties and choose vortex for the force. You can see that it's been added. Let's again open up the texture editor and control this with a gradient. We'll choose object distance and the object now is going to be vortex. Change this to two meters, add a keyframe, and let's set the value of this one, just like we did the previous gradient, to zero. And let's set this to, instead of 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Let's X out of that. Now for the force field, we changed the vector of the Y to 400 millimeters. For the vortex, uh, I just want to change the strength so that it's not too crazy to 0 0.5. And again, I'm going to now run a simulation to frame 300 by checking Enable Dynamics. Now that both forces are finished calculating, let's go ahead and scrub through the timeline. Let's go the force field coming up and the vortex to wipe them out as soon as they start landing back on the ground. And everything looks pretty much spot on, except for the fact that our boxes seem to be moving before the force field gets to them. Easy way to fix that is to select the boxes. Let's go to World Properties. And let's go to Item. Go to the Activation tab. The initial activation is to start active. But what I found works is to go to Activate on Last Key. And let's turn off Enable Dynamics. Let's scrub through the timeline to see when the force field gets close to it. Let's say frame 14 and just hit enter twice to create a key. So now the boxes will not turn on until the force field gets to them, which will disable them from moving um, before frame 14. Let's X out of that. Turn enable dynamics back on. I'm gonna go to frame 300. It's gonna simulate again, and then we'll make a preview and watch it. Let's play that. You can see the force field hits, the vortex hits, and everything looks great. Looks just like the example that was shown at the beginning. Okay, so that was Lightwave's Bullet Forces in 11.5. I hope you guys learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.